Hello everyone! Today I have a film that has been in the works for years and years, and even started filming way back in late 2015. I am Thorstein from Cinema Terror, and this is a sequel to the 40 year old infamous Nasty, with original director and actress returning in I Spit on Your Grave, Deja Vu. I got my mother's cheese. But I ain't got her forgiveness. The film is also set 40 years later, where the survivor of the first film, Jennifer Hills, has been able to go on with her life and also been able to write a book about the tragic events she survived. Her past is about to haunt her though, as she, together with a grown up daughter, is kidnapped by family members of the evil men that attacked Jennifer 40 years ago. They blame Jennifer for the death of the loved ones and has a plan ready to get savage vengeance. Seems like a simple and easy story, right? Well, somehow, for some unknown reason that is just baffling to me, the ones behind this felt it would be a good decision to make Ice Pit on the Grave Deja Vu into a 2 hours and 30 minute long movie. That's the same runtime that the Avengers Infinity War had. I don't think there would be a single person out there, even if you include the most dire fans of the original, that would give a positive answer if they were asked if Deja Vu should be that long. And it has no rights to be either. The exact same story could have been told in 80 or 90 minutes without anyone missing out on anything at all. Cocksucker. Make Johnny smile in his grave. I spit on Johnny's grave. The runtime is dragged out that long by having long, boring dialogue scenes. It feels like every scene could have been cut down to half, and that leaves us with a long, tedious, and terrible movie experience. I had a hard time finishing this film due to how messy and lazy it was put together, and every time it teased that it was wrapping things up, some moronic twist is introduced and the movie goes on for much, much longer. This is without a doubt the most mundane experience I've had in a long time, and even if I didn't have much expectations going into this, I still ended up being disappointed, perhaps more with myself than the movie for actually finishing it instead of using my time on something more productive. While the film does try to be graphic and nasty, it does nothing that is effective in providing any shocking moments. We've all seen this stuff before, and the same tricks that were done 40 years ago does not have the same effect today. It reminded me of all the I Spit on the Grave ripoffs that have been made over the years, with the evil people screaming and arguing, being annoying bad guys while they act violently towards women. It's all repeating stuff that has been done much better in the past, and even in the present, in movies such as the recently French film Revenge. Shut your fucking mouth! Come on, Herman! She's all yours, big boy! I guess the selling point of this is the return of director Maid Sarchi and Camille Keaton as Jennifer Hills. Sarchi is now 82 years old, and he hasn't directed a film since 1985 with Don't Mess With My Sister. I'm guessing this is something I felt a desire to do after the 2010 I Spit in the Grave remake did well enough to gain two sequels on its own. He basically put this thing together with his son Terry Saatchi, who served as a producer and editor. Terry has also completed a documentary called Growing Up with Ice Pit on Your Grave, which sounds like a much better time than this full feature film. It's pretty obvious that I'm not impressed by the work of the Saatchis on this film, and I sadly don't have anything more positive to say about the performance by Camille Keaton either. You must be very grateful for everything you have, Christy. You never know in life. It can all suddenly change before there's time to appreciate it. She is just lifeless in this one, and it feels like she's only in it as a favor to Maid Shadji, who was also her husband for a few years back in the early 80s. The rest of the acting is also awful, and none of it comes off as believable, which again makes my gripe with the running time so much worse. You have to spend 150 minutes with these characters, and that's not a pleasant or interesting time. I don't see anyone that I can recommend I Spit on a Grave Deja Vu for. Fans of these types of exploitation films will be bored by this, and fans of the original I Spit have already experienced a poor follow up starring Keaton in the 1993 unofficial Donald Farmer sequel Savage Vengeance. A film so bad it couldn't even get the spelling of Vengeance correctly. So I think Deja Vu will quickly be forgotten, and only brought up in the future as a weird curiosity that happened, but nobody cared about. I haven't seen the remake and its sequels, but even so, I'd rather recommend checking those out instead of this one. I Spit on the Grave Deja Vu gets a bottom score of 0 0.5 out of 5. Have you seen Deja Vu yet? Was I too hard on it, or do you agree that this is a film to clearly stay away from? 
and how are those Ice Beat remakes? Are they worth checking out? Let me and others know in the comment section below. And if you want a modern take on this genre, then you should really check out the excellent French film Revenge from 2017, which I just so happen to have a review of up on my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video more than I enjoyed this movie. I'll be back soon with more reviews, so stay tuned and keep watching this sleazy, dark space of YouTube called Cinema Terror.